So uh, remember that typically the internet is used in this client-server relationship. Not, not always, but uh, that's what we're assuming here. So client-server relationship. What this means is that server, server sits there and waits for connections. Right? Like a web server, it sits there and has some kind of service that it's providing. Like a web server, it provides a, a web page, it provides web pages. So it sits there on the network listening and waiting for connections for people to request something. Then a client does the requesting. So a client connects to the server and, set, and requests some service, like request the web page, please give me the web page, or something like that. So we're assuming this client server relationship. Our Ethernet shield can act as a client or a server. So right now we're going to talk about using the Ethernet shield as a client. Uh, when you do that, first thing you do is you have to create a client object. Okay? So Ethernet client is the name of, the, uh, name of this class. You say Ethernet client, client, and that creates a client object. You need that if you want to act as a client. So you create the client object. Then uh, you need to connect to a server, right? If you're a client, you're going to want to connect to a server to get some service from. So you can do that. We're showing two ways of doing it. Basically, you're calling this function called client.connect. Now, client.connect, it takes two arguments. The first argument, well, actually, we show two calls right here. The first call, it's two arguments are IP address and a port. So you got to give the IP address and the port number as its two arguments, and then it knows wh what uh, machine to talk to. Or you can pass it the two arguments of the domain name and the port. And remember, using domain, domain name service, DNS, the domain name can automatically, automatically be translated into, a, um, into an IP address. So either way is fine. Client.connect, you can call it, give it an IP address and a port number, and it makes a connection with a server. Now notice that uh, that line of code says result equals client.connect, result equals. So what that means is that uh, client.connect is going to return either a 0 or a 1, a true or a false. It returns a 1 if a connection is successfully made with a server. It returns a 0 if it's not. And so then in your code, you can say, if result, then da da da, right? So you can check to see if uh, a connection was successfully made before you go on and start communicating. Oh, and uh, client stop, client dot stop, that stops the connection. It ends the connection. So when you're done communicating, you just call client dot stop and it closes the connection. So sending and receiving data. <clears throat> so now, once you've made your connection, your client has made a connection with the server, you want to send data to the server and receive data from the server. So they have functions for that. Uh, client.print or client.print line, that sends data. Print just sends the data. And print line sends the data and sends a carriage return at the end. Uh, that's common for a sort of visible type data. If you're sending a line, you just want to put the carriage return in there automatically sometimes. So uh, print and print line, client.print, client.print line are used to send data. You, uh, now, and print line has a, the carriage return. Data is a string. So if you want to send strings, you use print or print line or an array of bytes, which is also a string, same thing. Now, if you just want to send raw data, it's not a string at all, then you call client.write, and you just pass the value, whatever it is. If you send a byte, value is a byte, you can send a client.write, it'll send the byte. Uh, now, there's a client.read is used to do the opposite, right? If you want to read data, if your client's trying to read data from the server, it calls client.read, <clears throat> no arguments, and that just reads the next available byte, the next byte that's come from the, uh, from the server. And it returns that. So data equals client.read. Data is going to end up equaling the whatever byte was received from the server. Also, you can call client.available. Client.available lets you know if there is data waiting. So if client.available returns 1, that means there's data waiting, so you, should, you can call client.read. If client.available returns a 0, then there's no point in calling client.read because it'll fail. Thank you. Mm -hmm.